In these days, as we live during a period of time of mass deception, those that desire to live successful spiritual lives must engage in a way of life that is hard for most people to accept. The hardest thing for people to accept is that we have to live in humility. We have to at some point accept that all that we were brought up to know and think of in regards to this world is a lie. And everything that we know needs to be relearned in a foundation of truth and with Yah and his word at the center of it all. We need to accept that everyone alive today from the oldest generation to the youngest, as a majority, have been engaged in and under the strongest forms of mind control and indoctrination that the world has ever seen in history. It comes from our television and movies that's providing predictive programming along with shaping our ways of morality and increasing our tolerance of evil, pushing new social norms that have never been accepted by society as a whole since the foundation of this world, while adding that every one of us who has been a part of the education system has undergone severe indoctrination that for most is unidentifiable. Well, what is indoctrination anyway? Indoctrination is the process of teaching a person or group to accept a set of beliefs uncritically, meaning they teach it, you learn it, and accept it as fact, period. There's no question. And for every one of us that has been a part of the education system of our country, particularly in the United States, where every generation that is alive today has been influenced by that system. If you have not come to terms with the fact that much of how you look at things and what you feel about things is not based upon truth, but about indoctrination, that you have been given a certain thought process and belief that has been taught to all of us without question. If you have not accepted that much of the way you think is more about indoctrination rather than knowledge, then you leave yourself extremely open to spiritually demonic attacks that come under the premise of lies that you have unknowingly accepted. For instance, how do you know that the earth is round and there is outer space? Have you been there? No, of course not. But because we have been taught since elementary school, since they have held these globes in our classrooms, since they made us do science projects of the solar system, since we believe what the older generations say that they saw on television and what the news reports right now, we all have been indoctrinated to believe in the shape of the earth and the belief that there is an outer space. And listen, I am not starting a conversation about flat earth right now, so please do not get distracted. This is an example. I'm just showing that because our indoctrination on this topic has been so strong, we just accept these teachings as undeniable fact, which should never be questioned or challenged. As a matter of fact, we find that the stronger the indoctrination, the stronger people are willing to fight for it, not to be challenged or exposed. There are many different subjects like this. I just use this big one to get your attention. Please do not get distracted. One main topic that we have been indoctrinated into a way of thinking about is about the subject of race or skin color. We have been conditioned to think about the color of our skin, but really only in regards to two races. And this indoctrination is a very strong, severe one because it is all about spiritual deception that has been taught through the flesh. About a month ago, I started this series about understanding Israel. It has been a very important topic because as we get closer to the tribulation period, we will find that this period is all about Israel and Yah desiring to lead them back to him. We also have found that the many hijackers in regards to the faith have made it so that we have learned of Yah through them while rejecting the important influence of the Hebrews and Yah's direct steering and guidance of them. Instead of us learning about the success and failures of the only people who have been led by Yah directly, we have been indoctrinated into a very Hellenized way of understanding the scriptures, which has placed people in spiritual deception while making them feel as if they are truly in a relationship with our Creator. When you fully understand how severe this all is, you really come to terms with understanding why Yahusha said the path to life is narrow and difficult and few find that path. We have been taught such a broad way, and because of indoctrination, people have just been in pure acceptance of it all. Anyways, where we're going in the rest of the Understanding Israel series is going to be dealing with skin color, because as we move into more modern history, this is how the writers of history have documented it. 
And before we go there, we need to really get a handle on race. I want to clearly speak about this so that there is no confusion and also in hopes that those that have been indoctrinated into Satan's way of thinking can humble themselves and realize the influence and shake it off. And we all must come into a more biblical understanding based on Yah's way and also the way that the people during these biblical times that we read of and try to learn about how they looked at the world. In the series many times I have said that we have to talk about race and we are at the time right now that we need to talk about it. So please bear with me as I take a brief pause in this series to discuss the topic of race as it pertains to the Bible and Yah's will and prophecy. Let's begin. Okay, so this subject is not new. I spoke on this subject about three years ago. The information and understanding has not changed, but the teaching needs to be updated and refreshed. As I have been making this series about understanding Israel, race continuously keeps being mentioned, even though I have not mentioned skin color once. Yes, I do illustrate them in the animations, but that is not about race more than trying to accurately depict history. I have also spoken about the fact that I believe that a portion of the scattered Jews are of those that were taken captive during the transatlantic slave trade and then brought to the United States and the Caribbean. But again, this was not about race. But unfortunately, this is all that people saw. People unfortunately see skin color before nationality. The people that were taken as slaves had an original nationality. They had their own culture. It's not about their skin color. But again, skin color is the first thing people see, unfortunately. That's the indoctrination. But you know what the crazy thing is? This is not unanimous among all races in skin color. When we see Asians, we don't say yellow people. When we see Native Americans, we don't say red people. And I did not make those classifications up. That is history, and that will be explained here. Race is really only drawn out and thought about between two races, white and black. And unfortunately, many people don't see that this is occultic in nature and mainly supporting the occult idea of a duality and a promotion of Masonic ideas in their black and white chessboard symbolism. But either way, we need to understand race and the idea behind it. Believe it or not, racism is a fairly modern idea. Over the history of our world, people did not classify people by their race or skin color. People were classified by their tribal names or by the nations they represented, such as the Persians, Greeks, the Jews, Saxons, Ethiopians, Egyptians, etc. This is especially true when we understand it from the Bible. The Bible does not speak about race or color of skin. That is not how the world was divided. But make no mistake, during the biblical times, the world was divided from Yah. There were his chosen people who was Israel and there were the strangers who did not know him, which were the other nations, the Gentiles. If you ever read the Bible, you will see him speak about the separation often. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that Yahuwah, your Elohim, will set you high above all nations of the earth. That's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one can number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, stand up before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. As Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. You see, there is not one mention of skin color here, or race. The world is not thought about by the color of people's skins, but by tongue, by tribe, and by nation. 
you will know and understand this very much from reading the Old Testament and understanding how Yah had Israel deal with the other nations. And then if you go to Revelations, like I just read, you see that in the end, it's still looked at in this way. All nations, tongues, tribes, peoples, all came before the throne, before the Lamb. So as believers, we must look at people based on how Yah does and not how we have been trained to. Again, like I said, we have been indoctrinated to look at skin color. So let's understand race a little more deeper. The world being divided by color was an idea that originated from a white supremacist in Europe after the Renaissance period. Johann F. Blumenbach, a German anthropologist born in 1752, he died in the year 1840. He was the first to divide humanity on the basis of skin color. We can attribute much of our racial divide today because of him. Now, don't misunderstand me. Racism already existed before this time. There was already a belief in scientific racism, which I will touch on shortly. Blumenbach did not create racism. He simply placed a classification system that is still used today. An official classification of people did not exist before Blumenbach. His work is considered one of the most influential works in regards to race. He classified that there were five chief races of mankind. They are the Caucasian or white race. He was the first to use this classification for people of European origin. He believed the people of the Caucasus mountains were the most beautiful people in the world. This is of course where the term Caucasian comes from. Then he had the classification of Mongolians or the yellow race which included all of East Asia and some of Central Asia. Then we have the Malayan or brown race, which included Southeast Asia and Pacific Islanders. Then the original American, which was the red race. These were the Native Americans. And lastly, the Ethiopians or the black race was the Sub-Saharan Africans. He was a white supremacist and considered the Caucasian to be the original race. So when we start talking about racial divide, this is where the conversation starts from. He basically color coded the people of this world. He was a racist and you need to identify if any of your feelings or thoughts come from this man. When you identify people based upon the color of their skin, you are not speaking through Yah, but your flesh, which has been influenced by Satan. Here's the deception. This classification system is a grand illusion by Satan to confuse the world and mask and hide his true intentions and place it around skin color instead of him being against bloodlines and nations. Satan hates humanity, but he above all hates one nation in particular, which is the nation of whom Yah chose as his own special people. But Satan, of course, does not come in full with his intentions. He masks them and guards them and puts deception around them. And while he is carrying out his attacks, people are being used by him, but they don't really understand the real reasoning behind it. For instance, if you really think that people hated the Negroes in America just because they had black skin, you are under severe mind control and indoctrination, and you have to reprogram yourself in truth. Let's continue. So while we continue to learn about this belief in race and skin color, we go to the 19th century. In the 19th century, we have a French aristocrat named Joseph Arthur de Gobineau. He was known for his influence on legitimizing racism through scientific racism and developing the theory of Aryan master race. He wrote a 1400 page book named An Essay on the Inequality of the Human Races. And this book argues that there are differences between human races, that civilizations decline and fall when the races are mixed and that the white race is superior. He used the scientific racism theory, which was a belief that evidence exists to support or justify racism. Simply racial discrimination, racial inferiority, and racial superiority. Scientific racism was common from the 1600s to the end of World War II, after the fall of the Nazis. Then all of a sudden, this program disappeared from the minds of people, as mainstream news and education shifted the thought process. 
of these thoughts were definitely in the minds of people in this country from the foundation that this country was built upon. He's got three children and uh, evidently he feels that they will be accepted socially and uh, I don't feel that they ever will be but the whole trouble with this integration business is that uh, in the end it probably will end up with with mixing socially and you will have well I think their aim is mixed marriages and becoming equal with the whites but the only way they're going to do that is by education and by bettering themselves not by pushing in the way they have here but yes those way of thinking was publicly denounced as racist it was this man J.A. Gobanu that really helped legitimize racism as being valid now there were many others like Houston Stewart Chamberlain 1855 to 1927 who wanted to advance the supremacy of the white Nordic race and its culture what I'm trying to show is that these thoughts were not uncommon. And the point that I'm trying to make is that due to the influence of men like the men that I just shown and others, this is where we get the division of race today. They added a psychological value to race that made people believe it was so. Basically, being that at the time, European civilizations were dominating much of the world through inhabiting foreign lands and possessing major breakthroughs in technology, they believed that they were obviously superior and the others were inferior. This was racism and it led to horrible racial philosophy and eventually the events led by the Nazis that was said to start World War II. So please understand, any view of racism, black people, white people, racial division, all of it is a very modern idea. It's not more than two to three centuries old. It is not how the world viewed and classified people before then. Now, that doesn't change anything, obviously. Knowing this will not change racism today, but it should change many people's understanding of where these thoughts come from. If you believe that your race is superior, it's because of the theories of white supremacists starting from the 17th century. Looking at the white race as the ones that are able to get it together and hold jobs and be civilized is an idea of white supremacists. This is not a natural view that has been held since the beginning of time. Or the reverse can be said, if you believe that the black man is superior because he is physically more endowed, that is a twisting of white supremacy. You only see skin color because a white supremacist classified people in this way, and the world eventually adopted his thinking. And then formal education and mind controlling programs like The Cosby Show kept the classifications going. You see, the powers that be want us to think in this way, and it's all for a purpose of division. This is racism, and that's the condensed history of it. You have to understand and place all of this in perspective. Before the times of the Civil War, America was much different than it is today. They did not need to teach our racism and the promotion of another because of skin color. Americans owned slaves, and they looked at the slaves as three-fifths of a person. Article 1, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution declared that any person who was not free meaning slaves, will be counted as three-fifths of a free individual for the purpose of determining congressional representation. The three-fifths clause thus increased the political power of slave-holding states. Yeah, they thought of the Negroes as only being three-fifths of a person. Anyways, racism did not need to be taught during this time. The classification system was already there. There were the free and there were the slaves. Where the indoctrination came into play is after the Civil War. Racism was actually taught to this generation. And if you don't want to believe that, just understand that they had segregated schools. The foundation of the country as we moved into the Industrial Age was based upon segregation, where people were taught to hate each other because of the color of their skin. You must understand that schools didn't stop segregation until 1954, with the landmark Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court case that outlawed segregation in schools. So you have at least half a decade in the 20th century where people were taught racist ideas. Then we had their puppet boule member, Michael King, used as a bridge and an enforcer of the idea that the hatred that people had against the Negroes was just about skin color and nothing else. 
and then they passed the civil rights legislation that prohibited discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. The country looked at this as all about color and racial identity. And then the next generations were taught about it in schools. We were taught about Michael King and his I Have a Dream speech. We were taught about it in our television shows. Rudy, what are you looking for? From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom reign. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the hiking Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. We were taught about it through our news and our politics. Race and color has been our primary way of thought. When you talk about skin color, you are only speaking about it because you have been indoctrinated to look at the world in this way. But again, this is not done specifically with all races of colors, but you will mostly always see this thought centered around the Negroes. Let me ask you, if you're a Caucasian and your family came to America from Europe, are all of you the same tribe of people? Do you not classify yourselves as Irish or Italian or Polish or something else? Well, they did back in the early 20th century after coming in through Ellis Island, yeah, there were some different classifications of Caucasians. Or what about when we speak about Asians? Do we just say Asians? Or to really understand who we are talking about, do we say Koreans or Japanese or the Chinese? Yeah, the different classifications based on their nationality. But for some reason, when we identify the race we call black people, we just look at them as Africans. Africa is basically taught to us as one type of people that come from there, black people. Black people are African and we all are part of the same heritage. That's it. This is unfortunately how people think. Yes, this is ignorant, but this is based upon the indoctrination of our education system. I mean, I want you to really think about all the world history we have learned about in schools. How much of history have you been taught about Africa? We are basically taught that these people are all the same and their history is unimportant. I really want you to think about it. Even now with all of this knowledge, with all of these DNA tests and all of our technology, how come it is still so that the people that descend from those that were taken in the transatlantic slave trade still have not been told where they come from and to what people they belong to? They have basically told us and taught us that we were just slaves. That's the extent to our history. We are taught that where we are defines us and our heritage before slavery is not important. With all of our knowledge, why is it that these people have not been able to have an identity outside of the land that they were sent to as slaves? I mean, the title African American is racist by itself. Look at this. This man is an African American, but he has a different skin color. He was born in Africa but moved to the United States and now is a citizen. So he is African American. But we use the term African American to only talk about the color of people's skins, which is black. Again, this is indoctrination. I really want you to ask yourself, why is it that African American history is only about history after slavery and not before? Why were the slaves that were brought here not able to read the Bible on their own? If the Bible was such a tool of control for the Negroes, why didn't the slave masters educate them fully so they can learn how to read the Bibles for themselves? The point I'm making is that when we look at Africa and black people, if you do not understand the world through biblical eyes, you are looking at it through tainted eyes that only see skin color. And this view that you may see things from severely stops you from understanding big topics of truth like the Understanding Israel series that have so much more to do with the national identity and heritage of a people more than the color of their skin. During this series of Understanding Israel, when people would comment about race and why am I talking about skin color, I would make the same point to them that often just went over their heads. I would tell them that until they stop looking at the world through the vantage point Satan has created for them, they would not understand this topic. I was not talking about skin color but I spoke about a group of people 
that are a nation of people. They were the Negroes. There was a reason for that name. And the Negroes are not the only tribe of people that existed in Africa. Africa is a huge continent, and there are many different tribes of people there. It is a fact that other tribes in Africa assisted the Europeans in identifying the Negroes to be sold in slavery. Those involved in the slave trade did not just go up and grab up random people based on skin color. But because you have been indoctrinated into these thoughts surrounding race and skin color, this is unfortunately the primary reason why you may think this. And what is desired is for people to remove themselves away from this way of thinking if you want to understand things from the ways of the Bible. Yah did not separate the world by skin color, but by nations. And the gospel is not to be preached to all skin colors, but to all nations. And in the last days, while the gospel is preached to all nations, Yah is still dealing with his nation he chose. This is not about racial superiority or putting people at a higher level than anyone else. This is about looking at the world through biblical eyes and not from satanically led views that we have been indoctrinated to hold. Please understand that. This is very important. And you have to be humble enough to recognize that your view of the world has been satanically tainted. Now, what I'm going to do is go over the history of the nations that I discussed three years ago as well, because it will help provide a strong foundation of the world from Yah's history rather than Satan's indoctrination. So let's understand the history of the nations. We will start post-flood with Noah. Noah had three sons. They were Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And from these three sons, the world was repopulated. So if we're to really classify people today, it would be proper to classify people according to this. There are the Semites, the Hamites, and the Japhites. Again, not according to the color of skin, but according to tribe. Now, the book of Genesis really provides a good basis of understanding of who these people are. When we read Genesis and we see those chapters about the sons of men, we often can just skim over that as useless info. But if we decide to dig deep to gain more understanding, we can really grow in knowledge. That info explains tribes of people. And if you follow the history of those tribes, you can follow the history of the world. This is why I speak of the Bible as the most known history book. We'll start with the Hamites, the descendants of Ham. I start with them because they are the beginning of recorded ancient history. They were the tribes of the great civilizations. Let's track it. Genesis chapter 10, the sons of Ham were Cush, Misraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havila, Sapta, Rama, Sabtaka, and Nimrod. All of these sons were Cushites. They dwelt in this land, northeastern Africa, in the Nile Valley, south of Egypt. They spread along the tracks extending from the higher Nile to the Euphrates and the Tigris River. Of Cush's notable sons, we know of Nimrod, the father god of paganism. Chapter 10 says the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalnel, in the land of Shinar. If you look for the definition of Shinar, you will see this is another name for Sumer, or Samaria, later known as Babylon, after the Tower of Babel. After Cush, the other son of Ham was Misraim. Misraim is the Hebrew word for Egypt. The word Misraim is plural form, meaning Upper and Lower Egypt. They were the second world empire after Samaria, Babylon. Verse 13 of chapter 10 says, Misraim begot Ludim, Anamim, Labahim, Nephtahim, Pathrusim, and Kashlehim, from whom came the Philistines and Kaphtorim. So you see, these tribes were where the Philistines came from, a tribe of people who were one time major opponents of the Israelites until they were wiped out. Let's cover another son of Ham, who was Canaan. This is obviously where the land of Canaan came from, and they were driven out of their land by Joshua and the Israelites. The Canaanites are what we know today as the Africans. It is written in the Babylonian Talmud, for when the Africans came to plead against the Jews before Alexander of Macedon, they said, Canaan belongs to us, 
as it is written, the land of Canaan with the coast thereof. And Canaan was the ancestor of these people, i.e. ourselves. Basically, in 332 BC, when Alexander the Great conquered the land of Israel, the Africans came to Alexander claiming that the land of Canaan belonged to them. Verse 15 says, Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, the Jebusite, the Amorite, and the Girgashite, the Hivite, the Archite, and the Sunite, the Arvidite, the Zemorite, and the Hamasite. Afterward, the families of the Canaanites were dispersed. Sidon was the firstborn of Canaan and where we get the Sidonians. In many history books, you'll read about the Sidonians under the name of the Phoenicians. The Greeks called the Sidonians Phoenicians. These were the descendants of Ham. Before Greek conquest, they were the power structure of ancient civilization, and they spread out amongst the continent we know as Africa. The Hamites civilization included the continent of Africa, the land of Canaan, which is Israel, parts of Arabia, Syria, Phoenicia, Turkey, Babylonia, southern Persia, Iran, East Pakistan, and a large part of India. So when we think that Africa is just part of one tribe of people, that is ignorance. There are many tribes of people in Africa in that land. So let's keep going. It's important to note that what people have been taught about the Negroes is that the reason they were taken in slavery is because they were cursed. And this is absolutely true. But the deception is which curse? People are taught that it was the curse of Canaan. Then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants. He shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be Yahuwah, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May Elohim enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan be his servant. That's Genesis chapter 9, verses 25 to 27. You see, this curse is on all the descendants which are in Africa, which is why their lands have been pillaged and why they have been controlled by other nations. But this is not the same curse that came over the Negroes. But that will be discussed at another time. So in continuing this discussion of the other nations, let's skip over Shem and go to Japheth, who we know as the Japhites. This is probably the least discussed son of Noah. Genesis chapter 10, verses 2 through 5, goes over the children of Japheth. It says the sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Teraz. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Ripath, and Togormah. The sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kitim, and Dodanim. Verse 5 says that from these, the coastland peoples of the Gentiles were separated into their lands, everyone according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. So Japheth occupied the isles of the Gentiles, which was the shore territories of the Mediterranean Sea in Europe and parts of Asia Minor from where they dispersed northward over the entire continent of Europe and a great part of Asia. Japheth's descendants traveled west, north, and northeast of the mountain of Ararat and the Caucasus Mountains. Let's talk about the sons of Japheth. Again, they were Gomer, Magog, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tetris. Gomer was the ancestor of the first Cimmerians and of the later Cimbri. These people include offshoots of the Celtic family and of the present-day Gaels of Ireland, Scotland, and the Hebrides Islands. Then the second son of Japheth was Magog. The Greeks called these people Scythians. The Scythians included all the wandering tribes who dwelt mostly near the north of the Black and Caspian Seas. They later migrated to Central Asia, Russia, and the Ukraine. The third son of Japheth was Madai, the father of the Medes. They were located at the southern part of the Caspian Sea, and they later united with the Persians to form one race. The fourth son of Japheth was Javan. From him came the Ionians and all the Greeks. We also find Ashkenaz, the son of Gomer, Japheth's grandson, and these people form the Germanic race, better known as the Germans. It is also where the Ashkenazi Jews of Europe descend from. Look at the name Ashkenaz. This is a topic that should be understood deeper. In the 4th century AD, the Germanic tribes were on the move. 
They were known under these names, the Lombards, Burgundians, Franks, Saxons, Angles, Jutes, Ostrogoths, Visigoths, Suevis, and Vandals. These 10 Germanic barbarian tribes settled all over Western Europe, and they intermingled with modern nations of Western Europe as we know them today, which is where we get Europeans. The children of Japheth are where we get the Europeans from today. Now we know that Europeans are what is classified as white today. So the question may be, were they originally white beginning from Japheth? This answer is difficult to say for sure. Anybody that feels that they can say this one way or another is speaking in absolutes that they should not do. But that's an introduction to the Japhites. Lastly, we will discuss Shem, who we know as the Semites. Chapter 11 of the book of Genesis goes over the sons of Shem until we get to Abram, who later would be named Abraham. Abraham was not only the father of the Hebrew Israelite nation, but also of the Arab nation. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Genesis chapter 16 verse 1 says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had an Egyptian and maidservant whose name was Hagar. Hagar bore Abraham's first son Ishmael. The Bible doesn't speak of his descendants, but other historians note that he married an Egyptian woman and had 12 sons. These 12 sons became the 12 tribes and inhabited the region from the Euphrates to the Red Sea and the Arabian Peninsula. And then from Abraham's other son, Isaac, we see his son Jacob, who bore the 12 tribes of Israel. The other son of Isaac was Esau, where we get the Edomites from, Edom meaning red. This was an ancient nation south of Israel and Moab. They were opponents of the Israelites. Herod the Great was an Edomite, but after Yahusha, their history is also a little vague. When discussing the Bible, this information should really assist with understanding who the Gentiles are. In the Bible, the Gentiles are also known as the other nations. When looking at the people in ancient history by their tribes, it really should drive that point home. Now, as we go through world history and begin to understand the Greek and Roman empires and how they intermingled with the other nations, you will be able to understand more how skin colors changed in regions. One thing many people like to say in these videos is that they don't believe Jesus was black, but he was probably a Middle Eastern. What they mean by this is his complexion was of lighter skin and had different features than of a typical black American male. The reason why this view is held is because what we see today of the people in the Middle East is fair-skinned people, at least what they show us on the television. But this is because of the intermingling of the other nations when they were conquered by Greece and Rome. It is important to understand that this was something that the culture of the Hebrews strictly prohibited. Not to say it didn't happen, but they were very protective about who they made it with. This was their culture according to their Torah. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1-4 through four says, when Yahuwah, your Elohim, brings you into the land which you go to possess, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Yahuwah, your Elohim, delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of Yahuwah will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. And that was their culture. It's very clear. Now, when the Greeks Hellenized the world with their Greek culture, there was a lot of intermingling between tribes. So Japhites and Hamites and Samites were often being mixed together. And this is really easily understood when analyzing the Egyptians. The Egyptian empire was a second world empire and it's not very hard to understand or know that the people there were darker skinned black people. They were not the Negroes. The thing about black skin is that our melanin literally allows us to absorb the sun, which makes our skin compatible with the climates in the Middle East and Northern Africa. Now, after Alexander the Great conquered Egypt and established his major city, Alexandria in Egypt, it's very easy to see how the Greeks cohabited with the Egyptians. This happened 
in many places all over the conquered world. The point of this part is to give proper background into the history of the tribes of the world. The world was divided by tribes, and there were nations or tribes that conquered the world. We spoke about where the idea of racism came from, and then we discussed the tribes that inhabited the world. Will this end racism? Obviously not. But understanding that racism is an idea created in modern history may help put it into better perspective for all of us. The Bible teaches us many things if we choose to study it. There is no reason to judge anyone by their race and skin color. This was an idea created by white supremacists. I know it's hard to remove the classifications created. We have many stereotypes associated with our racial classifications as well. So this is something that is not going away. A racism is a tool used for division and it will be used to create civil wars in different places in the world. We are all created by the same creator and he has given us all the same chance of redemption and salvation through belief in Yahusha the Messiah. Yahuwah does not look at us by our race, so those that are saved through redemption of the blood of Yahusha must make real efforts to change the way we view others and that we do not contribute to the racist mentalities that exist. There are many that would not worship Yahusha if they knew he was of darker skin. They love the idea of the white Jesus that has been spread by the Roman Catholic Church. That's not reality. And on the flip side, there are many that refuse to even believe in Yahusha because they all have seen the white Jesus images and they don't want to believe in this European religions. All of these are misunderstandings that come from the lack of information and study while also being programmed through media and formal education. But there are just things that need to be better understood in order to better understand the true world that we live in, away from all the clutter they've put in our minds. After we now understand racism and how the world was really divided by tribes and nations, we need to understand more about the Israelites and who they are. And so if you understand this teaching, I truly hope that you move away from the thought about skin color when we say black people being Jews, because that is not what this series about understanding Israel is about. It is deeper than skin color. But the thing is that as we go through history and reading from historians, they do speak in reference to skin color and there will be references made about skin color. But that is not the main objective being taught here. I am not elevating races over another. This teaching is not about black pride and all of that. Now, I do believe that people should know who they are and where they descend from. And this information has been withheld from us intentionally. But if you are understanding this from a thought process surrounding skin color, you're missing their overall point. Please do not bring racism into this. If you believe that the Negroes are not the descendants of Jews, that were in the land of Africa and the slave coast during the transatlantic slave trade, then you need to discuss what tribe or nation of people was. Speak in terms of tribes and nations. Speak in terms of how Yah divided the world and has us understand the world through. When you're speaking about skin color, you are speaking in the terms Satan has created. Now, I will admit that it can be hard to do. This reprogramming is not simple. But if you're trying to understand biblical topics, you cannot apply it with race and skin color. When I speak of the people you label as black people being Jews, I'm not saying that all black people are Jews. I mean, that's ridiculous. Again, like I showed, Africa is full of different tribes as we went over the line of Ham and his descendants. There was a reason why they picked the Negroes to sell them into slavery. It is also very important to not feel disconnected from Yah if you follow your lineage and you recognize that you are not a descendant of Israel by blood. This does not discredit you or make you unable to receive in the promises of Yah. You can be redeemed through the blood of Yahusha, but you must submit to him and believe in him and follow all he has commanded. It's important that you recognize your heritage and break iniquities and generational curses. There is nothing wrong with being a Gentile and you should not feel threatened by this. You can be redeemed, and you should make it your business of life to be redeemed. Just follow Yah and believe in his son whom he sent. The importance of who Israel is, is all about fulfillment of end times prophecy and making sure we are not aligning ourselves with hijackers who have infiltrated the faith in order to bring about a satanic kingdom. It is very important that we live in truth and that's why teachings like this have been brought forth. 
Reject the thought about skin color. And as we discuss these topics, do not look at it based on the color of skin, but of the nation that these people represent. You may hear references of skin color, and that is just to help solidify the understanding. But this is not about skin color or race. This is not about the elevation of one race or skin color over another. And I ask that you please review these thoughts and not apply it to these teachings. And don't come in the comments with them. There's no tolerance for it. I believe all can be redeemed through the blood of Messiah, and I reject all that say otherwise. But I am not editing truth to make it easier for you to digest. If you love Yah, love him genuinely, regardless of race or color or these other divisions Satan has created. He loves you and desires that you come to him, and he has given you a way. And understanding the nation he chose and directed will help you follow him better. If you believe in Yah and follow him, then submit to him and align to his truths. Live through him and be a part of his set-apart body. We are here to live in his truths, so we must be bold enough to proclaim it. Stand strong in Yah and rebuke the lies and ways of our enemy. Prepare for Yah's kingdom, because his day is upon us all. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please like it and share it with others. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Y'all willing, I upload every Friday. Also, don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to my email list on my website, truthunedited.com. Again, I would like to thank all those who support this ministry. I truly am humbled by your support. You are an answer to sincere prayers, and I thank the Father for you. Thanks again for your support. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.